All right, then, let's have a warm round of applause for our speaker tonight, Ted Aranda. Okay, welcome, Ted. Okay, since Charlie mentioned it, I'll respond in one or two sentences. When Bill Lee came last time, he manipulated the meeting. He didn't necessarily convince anybody of his points, but he tried to manipulate the meeting by uh, asking questions at the, or receiving questions at the same time that he was doing his quote-unquote presentation, and that enabled him to uh, control the dialogue, which was very unfair. But anyway, that's not my what I'm here to talk about. <clears throat> if you'll notice on the screen, um, this is a very important quote. It's from this uh, Puritan preacher in the English Revolution period. He said, we must understand with whom we live in this world, with men of strife, men of blood, having dragons' hearts, serpents' heads. Okay, these guys knew that they were in a very serious conflict uh, over the ruling class of that time, and we're in something of the sort now, except that some people apparently don't, don't understand that. <clears throat> what I'm gonna speak about today is a couple topics, a couple chapters in my larger study called Empire of Deception. And that's the subheading there, which is not finalized, but that's the Empire of Deception would probably be the overall title. And um, here are some parts of that uh, program that I'm uh, putting together. I pretty much put it together, I just have to finalize it. Um, so there, we're talking about state terrorism by the United States government and false flag operations from the Cold War through this quote unquote war on terror. And this pretty much started in 1947 with the creation of the CIA and the national security state <clears throat> in the United States. And it uh, had gone through uh, genocidal aggression against Korea and Vietnam, where literally millions were killed for absolutely no good reason, uh, for uh, American uh, imperialist aims. Fascist coups uh, uh, set up uh, run by the United States in Iran, Guatemala, Congo, and then of course uh, the assassinations of JFK, um, RFK, Martin Luther King, and probably Mar Malcolm X as well. Those are key events. Then in the 1960s through the 1980s for a full two decades or so, <clears throat> at least like, yeah, probably two decades, there was this thing called Operation Gladio in Europe. Has anybody heard of that? It's just NATO. Yeah. The United States through NATO uh, carried on literally state terrorism, and there's not even any question about that. It was investigated by the Italian Parliament and, and the uh, European Parliament, and there's just no question about it. I'll present that in my next talk, which will be on the Cold War. <clears throat> and then in 1995, we have Oklahoma City, which I'll get to in a minute, and of course 9 11. And most recently, we have these quote unquote mass shootings which are not, for the most part, most of them, are not actual mass shootings. They're literally hoaxes, as unbelievable as that may seem. But we have proof uh, of that. And I'm gonna talk about Sandy Hook tonight. And I'll just jump right in it, into it. I have a lot of material to get through, so I'll, I might move a little quickly. If I'm uh, confusing at any point, you can interrupt me and, and ask me to clarify. <clears throat> So 28 children were supposed to have been killed at uh, Sandy Hook, including the gunman, uh, 20, uh, 20 children and seven adults. Except that nobody died at Sandy Hook. Okay. Uh, this guy, Jim Fetzer, um, authored this book, and he had a lot of contributors, very well, um, good researchers, with half of them with PhDs. So he compiled this research, and that's what they determined. And this book, by the way, was banned from, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Amazon.com, because it was so dangerous to the establishment. So there's Sandy Hook, <coughs> elementary school. And the first question is, what school are we talking about? It was, a, it was not an operational school. It wasn't even an operation. Uh, and there was a lot of evidence of that. First of all, there was a severe disrepair, as you can see there with the railings uh, messed up. And now we're talking about and water stains, water, evidence of flooding, mass, uh, mold all over the place. This is a rich neighborhood, okay, a rich neighborhood. There was, there's no way that we would have a school like this in a place like this. Uh, the uh, classrooms were uh, full of junk, uh, and other ones as well. That would have been a violation of the fire code if it was actually an operation. <clears throat> and one of the key points in, in, uh, of evidence. 
is that there was no internet activity from 2008 to 2015. The school was closed down in 2008. That doesn't happen. You don't have a school in the modern age with no uh, internet activity. As you can see, with uh, compare, comparing that situation to others in nearby schools, that's the normal situation. Not that. Okay. Um, and then you, there are physical uh, signs. Here is the outside of the school. There are the windows. Okay, that's the front of it. There is no evidence of children, uh, you know, uh, having put up with their teachers Christmas decorations. This was on December the 14th, you know, the couple weeks before Christmas. That's abnormal. There are no signs of life at the school. One woman. Uh, had uh, aerial photographs and sh that showed uh, uh, one school nearby full of the parking lot full of this one empty. Okay. Um, so Sandy Hook was in severe disrepair. It was built in uh, 1956. In the years before the massacre, it was in a state of disrepair and contaminated with environmental toxins. Could everybody hear me all right, by the way? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> in 2008, it was found to be contaminated specifically with asbestos. That's very serious. After the quote-unquote shooting, Newton was granted $50 million by the state of Connecticut to demolish and completely rebuild the school. The official justific justification being not the shooting, but as best as abatement. Okay, so you have all these kids. Uh, there were close to 600 uh, kids plus staff, and they were supposed to have evacuated the school, right, after the shooting. What evacuation was there? There was no evacuation because it wasn't a functioning school, and there were no kids there except maybe a few actors. So, and there's evidence of that. So this is the parking lot from an aerial view, and this car right here, can you see the pointer, the cursor? Folks, can you see that? Yeah. Just curious. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, actually, I'm sorry, that car right there, uh, Cruiser had a dash cam, and there were other, a couple other dash cams, but this one is uh, the one that gives uh, the best view of what was happening. And this is the only photograph. Hold on. Okay, let me see if uh, I'm going to get to this thing. Okay, I, I, I jumped the gun there. That's scary because uh, it can happen to get things out of order. But no, we're, we're cool. Uh, okay, so that was the only photograph that was revealed, that was revealed to the world of the evacuation. Okay, there are, like, like I said, uh, over 500 students, okay? And all we see is a dozen and a half in one photograph. And there's signs that this was staged. First of all, look, look around. There were no other uh, kids anywhere else. And this was apparently the second of, uh, photograph of, uh, of two similar photographs. And this one looks like they're preparing to, they're staging this to make it look good. And, that's, and this one's going to be the actual shot that they use. So some of those kids are on the same line. They're just real rage. Now, this is what we would expect uh, to have seen. That line over here on the bottom left, okay, were reproduced many, many times with these, pe these kids flooding out of the school into the parking lot. And there were plenty of, of, there were helicopters flying over. How on earth could they have not have seen the evacuation? There was no evacuation. Now, uh, I think now we're, yeah, we're going to get to this dash cam. That's the vehicle with the dash cam. And it went up to the, most of the parking lot. And so, at 9.58, the parking lot is empty, 10.03 empty, 10.12 empty, and so it goes. And yet, in the official report, it says, so-and-so arrives, assist with the evacuation of students and teachers from Sandy Hook Elementary School, 9.58. 10 one so-and-so arrives, Evacuation of the students and teachers. 1005, children are escorted from the front of Sandy Hook. 1007, children are escorted from the northeast corner of Sandy Hook. These are lies. There was nobody being escorted, as you can see from the dash cam video. <clears throat> now, what kind of mass murder do you have with no dead bodies? Has anybody heard about this, by the way, this, this hoax of Sandy Hook? No, this is the first time. One, okay. One or two. Okay. Actually. Three. Okay. It was on a comedy show. Comedy <laughs> show. Okay, that, I mean, uh, what was the macabre comedy? Anyway, okay, so uh, the official report states that 28 persons were killed at Sandy Hook. 20 children and other deaths, including Adam Lanza. But there are no photographs, videos, 
official detailed reports, or witness accounts of any killing taking place or any dead bodies present at the school. The funerals, quote unquote, were all closed casket. You, nobody could see the children. So no bodies of their children were viewed. Furthermore, the parents were not allowed to see their children's bodies at all. Okay? The child just died. They don't let you see the body. And they agreed to this. They didn't, they made no fuss. Why? Because they were in on the plot. Is this unbelievable or what? Is this yes, like it is. off the deep end? Yes, yeah. It is. Okay. Well, unfortunately, uh, this is what happened. Okay. In the official police report, hold on a second, something happened there. Okay, anyway. In the official police report, the names and contextually identifying information of involved children were withheld, including descriptions of the children, their clothing, and their belongings. Remarkably, the report does not even include the names, the ages, or the sex of the alleged victims of the shooting. There is no actual identification of any of the dead. That's a photograph of uh, Nancy Lanza's um, bedroom. She was supposedly killed by Adam Lanza before he went off to kill the children at, at their home. They, they, they didn't photograph the body in the, in the house of, of Nancy Lanza. And all they have is this ridiculous little stain here. She was fought, four, uh, uh, shot four times in the head. You had a pool of blood. You know, you had blood all over. This is a white carpet. There would be blood every freaking place. And this is not even the color of blood. And these uh, uh, photographs, there were a lot of them, I'm not going to go through any more of them, at the home were all apparently staged. There were lots of indications that they were staged. And they, if, if, they, if this had been an actual police investigation, it would have been totally unacceptable, totally unprofessional, not the way things are done. The way they staged all the photographs and rearranged things willy-nilly. It was all staged. Look down here. Crime in the United States, 2012. This is FBI figures. Murder. Murder, uh, non-negligent, manslaughter, no town. And Sandy Hook was a new town, because the town of new town. Murder. The number? Zero. That's the official figure. <clears throat> okay, another thing, uh, in a MCI mass casualty incident, you have star triage, where you have tarps and the wounded are laid in one place, uh, lightly wounded, major wounded, dead, etc., etc. This is a real incident, not Sandy Hook, and the are the tops being used. Now you had 28 people supposedly dead, and there would have been a whole lot of wounded, right, in addition to the 28 killed. There's the tarp at Sandy Hook, sitting there in the middle of that scene. It's empty. Okay? Um, there are no bodies there. There was, in fact, zero sense of urgency. Not one emergency medical technician was allowed into the school before 10 a.m. The shooting started at uh, 9.30. No bodies came out. Only the police were allowed access. There was no evidence of any frantic effort to save lives or remove bodies to hospitals. Instead, the scene outside the school looked calm and bloodless, with police and other personnel moving around casually and a severe shortage of dead or injured victims. That's what uh, the researchers said. And then there's an interview by uh, Sophia Smastrom of this uh, school safety expert named Paul Preston. Preston says, the first thing that caught my eye as I was watching everything play out on TV was the lack of intensity with which people were moving and that really disturbed me. Now this guy has like decades of experience with this sort of thing, uh, emergencies at schools. Smastrom adds, it was like too slow motion for a real event, not enough panic, not enough chaos, alarm, and concern. And there goes another tarp. The police, uh, sh I hope this, there's no problem with this, with this set of photographs because that actually should have been earlier, but let's wish me luck. The police can't uh, pronounce people dead, um, says one emergency technician. We can't pronounce anyone dead unless they're de decapitated and it's totally obvious. We have to take everyone to the hospital. That's where they pronounce them dead. The police don't have the authority. We don't have the authority. Sandy Hook, you didn't have any uh, professional uh, emergency person, doctor, nurse, pronouncing anybody dead. So another thing, all the ambulances practically were at a nearby firehouse. They weren't at the school at all. Okay, there's the uh, firehouse on the right and, and the school on the left and a, a Dickinson Drive between them. The fire, the uh, ambulances were all packed together near the firehouse, and the the, the corridor.
to the school with, with blocked by police cars. Now, if they wanted ambulances to get to the school, obviously they would have been able to do that, right? Now, the ambulance drivers apparently weren't in on the scheme because they thought we should be able to get to the school and save these children, right? I can't get the squad up here. The road's blocked too much, said one. We have gridlock here. So another. Okay, now, do this. There were a lot of people at the firehouse, not at the school, at the firehouse, and they're literally going around the circus looking busy, trying to look busy. Okay, literally going around the circus like that. And you can follow them individually, like these two women on the left here, in the blue and the uh, yellow jackets. Watch them turn the corner, go through cars, and go back into the school. And you can see a lot of people doing that sort of thing. And also just wandering, literally aimlessly, like that guy in the yellow jacket. He's literally just walking back and forth. Okay, it was apparently a drill. What happened to Sandy Hook was apparently a drill. It, that was made to uh, seem like a real uh, live uh, sh shooting event. As a matter of fact, they had refreshments. They're supposed to be saving dying children. They had refreshments, snacks, laid out. Okay? There's uh, the so-called uh, Adam Lanza, and I say so-called for a reason, which we'll find out in a minute. And he's supposed to, excuse me, <clears throat> and he's supposed to have had all this weaponry. He was supposed to have been Rambo, okay, with an AR-15, two uh, pistols, uh, a, a vest, uh, all kinds of gear, uh, tons of ammunition, uh, hundreds if not thousands of rounds of ammunition. All of this would have weighed as much as he did because he was a, a thin, supposedly uh, sickly, or, or and also by the mentally impaired young man. You only weigh like 120 pounds, and all that gear would have been about the same. You cannot do that. Okay, that is uh, that does not work for a, a, a skinny young kid to be able to do that. So, who is this quote-unquote killer Lanza? <clears throat> the official report on Sandy Hook does not establish a causal nexus between the shooter, his victims, and the weapons he is alleged to have used. Under these circumstances, it would have been impossible for the alleged shooter to have been convicted in a properly conducted court of law for his alleged offense. It is, in fact, beyond belief that a person like Adam Lanza, very thin and frail, mentally impaired, untrained in weaponry, could have perpetrated the shooting, carrying and handling all those heavy weapons and many pounds of ammunition, and then shooting with amazing accuracy, 96% kill rate. Okay? He killed 96% of the people he, he shot, supposedly. <clears throat> um, and getting no blood on his clothes. Uh, and we'll see a photograph in a second of his clothes. Not a drop of blood, even after he supposedly shot himself in the head. Uh, Brawny firearms experts have stated that such a performance would be taxing even for them. In addition, there were flagrant contradictions in the number, type, and location of the weapons. And there is no surveillance video of Lanza approaching, entering, or walking through the school, even though Sandy Hook was supposed to have had recently upgraded security system. What school in the modern age doesn't have a darn camera working? Okay. <clears throat> and the contradictions in the weapons, I, I'm not even going to get into this, it's a complete mess. <clears throat> and there are his clothes, like I said, not a drop of blood, including on his cap, the, man, the, the young man supposedly shot his, himself in the head, literally not a drop of blood anywhere. Utterly unbelievable. Okay, does Adam Lanza even exist? Can you believe? They not only made up this whole shooting, they made up the perpetrator out of whole cloth. These here are the only photographs you'll find of this supposed kid on the internet. And experts say that there's all si kinds of kinds of signs, uh, all yeah, kinds of signs of um, photoshopping going on. For instance, this this straight neck here. Okay, the experts know more about that than I do. But these are just freakish clown photographs. This is the only one of him in a group, and he still looks freakish. This could have been photoshopped in. His head looks way too small for this body. Okay, the whole thing, and that's it. That's about it. This is in 2012, right? What kid in 2012 in the United States doesn't have all kinds of photographs of him and his family and friends and all that, right? Like his brother, Adam Lanza. All right, a perfectly normal young man, a few years older, with all kinds of 
I mean, who questions the existence of frigging Adam Land, uh, Ryan Lanza, his brother? Nobody, right? But Adam Lanza apparently does not exist, did not exist. <clears throat> In fact, this one researcher looked him up on this website with public records, okay? Comprehensive database search, searches. She looks at Adam Lanza, she finds a mother, uh, a relative, somebody, uh, only one, Kathy Lanza. Well, that can't be the right Adam Lanza because he had a, supposedly had uh, a father, Peter, a mother, Nancy, and a brother, Ryan. So that's not the right Adam Lanza. So he look, she looks up, and he, she couldn't find Adam Lanza. So she looks up Nancy Lanza. Now, that's supposed to be his mother, so she's supposed to have a son named Adam Lanza, right? Pretty basic stuff. Here are her, are her relatives. Peter Lanza, her husband, Ryan Lanza, her son, no Adam Lanza. So she looks at Peter Lanza, his, uh, Adam's supposed brother. Two relatives, Nancy Lanza, his mother. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, Peter Lanza, uh, the husband. Uh, Nancy Lanza, his wife, and Ryan, his son. No Adam Lanza. So she looks at Ryan Lanza, his mother, Nancy, his father, Peter. There was no Ryan, uh, Adam Lanza in this San Diego bullshit thing. Okay? Now, <clears throat> here goes more evidence. Again, with, with, these, with these hoaxes and uh, these false flag operations, when you look into them, they don't hold up. And there's a mountain of evidence as high as the sky that, that things don't fit. Because when you make up things, things don't fit. And there's, 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 there's a, a, a dras drastic lack of evidence or wrong evidence. So here's this, uh, uh, supposedly, the police claim that this is uh, Adam Lanza's bedroom in his house. So this one guy, he had the proper equipment where he could zoom in on the photographs. What did he, what did he find? A tape with Ryan Lanza's name, uh, all kinds of documents with Ryan Lanza's name on the, on the letter there. I, whether or not you can see it clearly on the screen, uh, be assured that the researcher, you know, can see that that's Ryan Lanza. A uh, uh, school grade report, Ryan Lanza. Um, and another letter addressed to Ryan Lanza. Okay, right, right there. Apparently this was Ryan Lanza's bedroom. It wasn't Adam Lanza's bedroom at all. <clears throat> so, there was no Adam Lanza. Um, now, this, the, these families, this is, if, if it can be, get any more bizarre, it's going to get more bizarre right now. These families, uh, the parents of the kids that were supposedly murdered, most of them were new to the neighborhood uh, within a couple of three years. Okay, so this plot was in creation for a few years, apparently. They received their houses on Christmas Day. They were given houses on Christmas Day, 2009, for zero dollars. They were given houses, all right? Christmas, and and the, the records say Christmas Day. What, there, there aren't even any offices, government offices, or any kinds of offices open on Christmas Day. And then a few years later, they all left. The families were fake. They were planted. They were part of the plot. So to conclude, <clears throat> this is uh, one of the researchers. The homes of 15 of the 20 Sandy Hook City victim, uh, child victims, um, and all the Sandy Hook uh, adult but non victims have the mysterious sale date, the homes, yeah, have the mysterious sale date uh, uh, of uh, Christmas Day and a zero dollars sale price. And three selectmen, that's like um, city councilmen, they are, uh, three selectmen, especially interesting because uh, I believe they uh, received, yeah, they were one of the people that received uh, uh, houses as well. Okay, conspiracy. Okay, <clears throat> these parents, uh, a large number of them, were literally actors, performers, literally. Okay, these two here are actors. This woman is uh, a dancer, a singer, and an actor. She does uh, children's videos. This man is a TV actor. This man here is a musician. That man there is, uh, one of the parents, is a, a musician. Okay, there, there, there were many of these, way beyond, uh, beyond the proportion that you would expect in a random sample of, 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 of people, parents of children, in a random school. Okay. So, and then immediately after the event, they become these spokesmen, these champions, as says their violence prevention champion of change, larger than life, all of a sudden. Okay. This woman, and half of them look like Hollywood folks, you know? 
bad that Hollywood look. Uh, hanging out with Obama, all right, creating uh, foundations. This woman here is literally a, a, an international diplomat. Uh, Ron, Vernon Coward, Embassy of Switzerland, okay, Diplomatique, Switzerland. And her big thing is prohibiting the use of uh, uh, conventional weapons. So she wants to disarm everybody. She wants to take guns away from everybody. That's her thing. <clears throat> so here they are, again, with Obama and Biden. How many ordinary people hang out with the president and the vice president on a routine basis, probably first name fucking basis, excuse my language, okay? <laughs> they were not ordinary people. Many, if not most of the Sandy parents are actors or aspiring entertainers and performers, ambitious types of people. What are the chances of that in a small, random set of school families? Francine Lovis is an actor and singer. Her husband David is also an actor. She was the first person during the Obama administration, other than Obama or Biden, in other words, the only private citizen who was allowed to deliver the weekly presidential address to the nation. Okay, these were serious high rollers here. In general, these parents seem to have become instant activists and promoters, especially for gun control, immediately after the Sandy Hook incident. Smooth and polished public speakers, unlike ordinary people. Scarlett Lewis started a new age cognitive training program with a former CIA agent. And as I mentioned, this woman, very Posner's life, uh, life mission is to prohibit weapons of all kinds. In the Sandy Hook, a character a larger than life, says Pierce Mostrom. They are not afraid to lobby, speak publicly, or pursue their agenda, all the while looking comfortable doing it. <clears throat> now, you think you're in the middle of the Twilight Zone? How about if we start burrowing down to the, to the center of the earth where you know, the real Twilight Zone is? Nice. These people were giddy, were laughing, smirking, okay? Carrying on like they had just won the lottery, as we'll see in a little uh, uh, image here. I mean, they were just so, in their in interviews with these uh, uh, collaborators, the, the cool, mass cool, media cool. collaborators, uh, Anderson Cooper. All right. Um, uh -oh. Three days after uh, her daughter was killed, this woman is laughing and having it up. Why is this couple absolutely giddy? One, they just lost a lot of. Two, their seven-year-old daughter was murdered three days ago. You pick this one. Oh no. This guy here is utterly infamous. Anybody seeing this uh, video here? Oh yeah. Uh, Robbie Parker will know that the whole thing is a flaming hoax. I mean, smoking hoax. This guy, he's hours, not days, hours after his daughter was killed, he comes up to the podium for a freaking press conference. Like, who's going to be giving, who's going to give, be giving press conferences hours after your daughter is killed, right? He comes up to the uh, podium, literally laughing, literally. Okay, you should watch the video sometime. You can look it up. Robbie Parker, Sammy Hook. Smiling, smirking, and then he gets, uh, and he apparently doesn't know he's on camera, okay, until now. Actually, not even now, because he wouldn't, be, he wouldn't have been doing this if he knew he was on camera. He just lost his mind. Anyway, so he starts hyperventilating and getting, getting into the character of a person who has just lost uh, their uh, uh, child, okay? And then he launches into this ridiculous canned speech about his daughter, as if anybody would be able to hold it together, talking about your daughter that was just killed uh, hours ago. Here's a Facebook uh, photograph of the of supposed family. Does anybody notice anything, any problem with this photograph? Say again? Does anybody notice a problem with this photograph? Uh, I'll give you a hint. Look at uh, Ronnie Parker's lap. There's no legs. Okay. There, like this young lady said, there are no legs to these kids. <laughs> Where did the legs go? Somebody photoshopped this thing. It wasn't even a real family, all right? That's what child legs would look like. There are no legs. Why? Because it's a, it's, a, it's Photoshop. Now, I was just curious. Um, you know, remember the Beslan school siege in Russia, all right, where a whole bunch of kids got shot and killed in, you wouldn't know, uh, in, 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 in this place, all right? I was curious is there, if there was any indication that that was a hoax, that that didn't happen. Well, no. I looked through several pages of Web page, uh, excuse me, lists of, of uh, websites on Google, 
there is not the slightest indication that that was a hoax. Why? Because it wasn't a hoax. Real things are real and they make sense and you can see all the evidence that they make sense. Unreal things don't make sense. And that's why all these false flag operations uh, don't make any sense. Because senseless things don't make sense. Here's what real, a real tragedy looks like. Real children being saved by real people, injured and dead bodies, actual dead bodies displayed by the media, who was not in on the game, at least they weren't in Russia, unlike here. Actual expressions of stress and grief. Okay, that's reality. Sandy Hook was unreality. So why would these people be doing all of this? Well, one reason, you guessed it, big money. Each of the families, each of the parents, set of parents, received uh, in over a million dollars each. Okay, they became instant millionaires. And they were raising money like gangbusters, okay? Just. Okay, so insane amounts of money were raised by the Sandy Hook parents in the name of their quote unquote dead children. The many don donation sites alone worked in, worked in 27 million. Uh, a total of $131 million was received by the town of Newton, uh, Newtown and the families in the form of government grants of all sorts and in private donations. There was an immediate fundraising reaction by the parents on the heels of the Sandy Hook incident. In some cases, donation websites were set up on the very day of the shooting. Who on earth is going to be setting up websites the day the child was killed to raise money? Raise money for what, by the way? Oh. One parent would open a bank account on the day their child was shot and killed, says one of these researchers. <clears throat> okay, now on to um, dead giveaway. Rock solid proof that this was uh, all a, a, a plot. There was foreknowledge. Some of these websites, donation websites and other kinds of websites, Facebook pages, several of them, were set up before the event took place. All right, case closed, right? We don't even have to talk anymore. This was a, this was a hoax, through and through, top to bottom, up and down, left and right. This uh, website, talking with your child about the Sandy Hook tragedy, was set up, or rather was written on December 10. It was posted on, on, on the, uh, Internet on December 13. The murder, uh, excuse me, the massacre was on December 14. Okay, these people jumped the gun. And this guy who uh, investigated this particular incident, he's a computer expert. He knows what he's talking about. He knows what he's doing. And there was no chance of any, you know, error here uh, in terms of uh, of their not that date not being correct. They posted this thing before the massacre. Case closed. That, those were his words. Other incidents. This one is, is actually more famous. United Way set up a uh, website on December 11, two day, or three days before the shooting. Sandy Hook School Support Fund. All right. So uh, more evidence of a plot because when you investigate a, a, a hoax of this magnitude, you're going to find a lot of evidence. <clears throat> Uh, here's a, a bill in, in the Connecticut uh, state legislature to stop the disclosure of aut autopsy reports. This was a, a, a roughly a year before the Sandy Hook incident. All right, a year before the incident, they're already preparing the groundwork to stop uh, the spread of information about the incident. Why? Because you know they don't want the cat out of the bag, right? Uh, so here is what this says. Um, the bill would prevent the Office of the Chief Medical Examiner from unilaterally disclosing autopsy reports on pediatric homicides to the general public. Big that. Not homicides, not injuries, not, you know, pediatric homicides. Because they're getting ready to stage this fake killing of children. And then immediately after the <coughs> uh, massacre, uh, alleged massacre, there were these bills to restrict the access of death certificates, block the release of records, uh, these, these parents, uh, um, these former parents, uh, go to the state legislature to get on TV uh, to prevent public release of crime scene photos and other information. Why would anybody be so gung ho, so so into, so uh, intent on blocking the public release of information? They say privacy. What, what privacy? You know, they wanted to. Uh, it's plausible 
but along with all the all the other evidence, it's it's that's not right. They wanted to block information, including non-call audio, crime scene photos, witness statements. Why would you want to be blocking witness statements of a homicide? Wouldn't you want to know what actually happened? They weren't there at the school to know what actually happened to the children. If your child was killed, you'd want to know what the heck happened. You wouldn't want to be trying to block information about it. And they went all the way to the, the, the again, on the big stage at the Connecticut legislature. There they go. And the bill was finally signed because the governor is in on the plot. This thing goes deep, okay, as you can tell. And then uh, they demolished the building. Now, they didn't just demolish the building. They pulverized it into dust, pretty much, sand and dust. And they took it, all the remains, to a secure uh, a site with fences and guards <laughs> so that nobody could see the, the evidence. And not only that, <coughs> okay, employees who worked on the project were required to sign non-disclosure agreements. They were not only prohibited from removing anything from the site, they were forbidden from discussing publicly anything they may have observed or not observed during the demolition, such as an absence of bullet marks on the walls or blood on the floor of the classrooms. Does anybody at this point doubt that this was a hoax? What does it get? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to hear from you folks. Did, did. Did, you heard me, right? Uh, did anybody yeah. does anybody yeah, doubt yeah. that this was hoax? So you think that this was, you, you think this was real? It was not a hoax. Okay. Well, right. The, you the, think it was the, real? The that massacre, actually happened. The official the story massacre, was real. The massacre was real, okay. but the allegations that it was a hoax are a hoax. Okay. All right. All right. Now <clears throat> he's changing the format to twist our mind. <laughs> yeah, you're, on, doing, you're, you're doing. You're doing Bob Leon. Come on, come on. Come on. Uh, no more of that. No more of that. I'm not even going to ask you people any questions. What does it mean? Uh, we're going we're to stick to the format. Okay. Uh, so mass shootings. Um, here you have a list. Uh, you can you can look this up uh, on the internet. Uh, mass shootings in a given year. Uh, because this is getting to uh, you know what really this was all about. And here you have. Um, a list uh, uh, day by day. You have zero kill, kill, four injured. The left column is killed. The right column is injured. Uh, so you have zero, zero, three, one, zero, zero, two. Okay, drips and drabs. Now that's bad. Drips, uh, what are the expression? Now that's bad, right? For anybody to be killed, but it's in small numbers until you get to these infamous mass shootings, where you get these exorbitant numbers, like Orlando. This this example here is Orlando. Okay, and then you go back to zero, one, zero, okay. So people are being killed, but it's mainly in small numbers by and through the use of handguns, not rifles, not assault rifles. Um, as a matter of fact, um, handguns are like 10 times, used 10 times more than rifles. Okay, uh, is, is the government trying to take uh, uh, handguns away at this moment? They might eventually, but not at the moment. Right now they're targeting assault weapons, quote unquote assault weapons. So people are being killed uh, almost uh, the vast majority by handguns, and they want to take away saw rifles, right? So what is really happening here? Now, Sandy Hook was and is a massive conspiracy among the federal government, up to the president and the attorney general, the Connecticut and Newtown governments, the town residents, and state and local police, as well as many other agencies. A major motive is general gun, gun confiscation or preparation for it, disguised as quote-unquote gun control. In other words, the disarmament of the American population. More generally, Sandy Hook and the many other recent false black state terrorist forces and attacks are meant to induce fear in the people and to normalize mass killing in society. When you see mass killings all the time, well, so what? Another mass murdering, people getting killed, you know, what's a big deal? They are mass mental manipulations performed on the population by the government and its controllers. Okay, um, a chapter in a book I read a long time ago uh, on the American Revolution was entitled, A People Well Armed and Dangerous. Now, I'm not a gun nut, all right? But um, at the time, at the American Revolution, Americans were well armed. And that was one of the reasons that they were able to defeat the British. Okay. Uh, here's Obama crying about Sandy Hook. He's a better actor than the actors they hired. Because no one drives Sandy Hook and you knew it full well. So
So that says it all. We have no hope in, in these quote unquote leaders of ours. <laughs> Let me move on to uh, quickly to Oklahoma City. All right. Now, this was 1995, as you all recall, I'm sure. The uh, Murrah building was bombed. That's w uh, one of the very rare photographs from the rear, okay? And, I, and Oklahoma City was a relatively simple thing. Uh, a building was bombed, 168 people were killed. Um, so let's see what actually happened or did not happen at Oklahoma City. There's the building and all the extensive damages you can see. That's a, a rare uh, top foot photograph from the top, aerial photograph. And you can see the, the pattern of damage is mostly uh, linear, whereas a, a truck bomb should have had a spherical, circular damage. And we'll, I'll get into that more in a minute. It goes, and so here you see the, the huge damage going into the building. And just to make it perfectly clear to you how extensive that damage was. Now, one of the things about this, as you see, as you see here, is that the debris fell straight down. This was supposed to be a truck bomb in front of the building that was so powerful that it destroyed half the building. The debris should have been blasted away from the truck. Okay. Here, it's going straight down toward the truck. Now, um, this, so, I'll just continue and comment later. Here are some of the injured people. Again, a real incident. Actual blood and injuries, no doubt about it. And uh, 19 children were killed, including 15 in a daycare center on the top floor of the rural building. Those are, those are pictures from that daycare center a week before. And those are the dead children. And Timothy McVeigh was supposed to have done all this. Okay? He was, in fact, a classic patsy. And I'll explain why in a minute. I'm not going to talk about Timothy McVeigh, but uh, that will be apparent in a minute. And uh, what's his name? Terry Nichols is supposed to have been involved in the plot. Only one slight problem, he wasn't there in Oklahoma City on the day. He was in Kansas. So his connection is very tenuous at best. But they were supposed to have uh, filled this uh, truck bomb with, uh, excuse me, this truck with ANFO, which is uh, ammonium nitrate fuel oil. Ammonium nitrate fuel oil. To, that's the name of the bomb. And they were supposed to have done this at this uh, lake, like, and there are photos of the lake. It's a public uh, park. This man saw the truck out in the open a few days before the official story says it occurred. But anyway, it was out in the open. These guys are constructing a truck bomb, a complicated truck bomb. Okay, it takes many hours to do correctly in a public park, supposedly. Okay, and then they parked the truck. And it's supposed to be that kind of damage with that program in front of the building. And then this knucklehead, Timothy McVeigh, uh, was speeding along, away from the crime, getting away, and he was driving a car with no license plate, so therefore, of course, the police caught him, right? That's the story. And here go the holes in the story. There were clearly two men involved, one of them, one of them clearly Timothy McVeigh, and then this other guy, John Doe number two, who was observed by Many people, okay, like this guy Mike Mertz. Everybody says, okay, this guy Tim McVeigh was accompanied by this other guy, and they described him very clearly. Um, and saw him, uh, saw this guy John Doe number two with Tim McVeigh uh, at the hotel, at the motel that they stayed at. And so, now in the beginning, there was supposed to be this manhunt, uh, the, the greatest manhunt in the history of the United States for this John Doe number two, right? A few days later, or a few weeks later, whatever, all of a sudden the FBI says, oh, well, that, that, he didn't exist at all. He's just a figment of everybody's imagination. Okay, and they confiscated all the cameras around the military, which would have shown exactly who was there doing what. And now, there were actually two explosions at the Murrow building. Okay, not one from one bomb, one truck bomb. There were two explosions. There, and, Countless people. Literally, a, a, one of the investigators said, I lost track of how many people said, uh, with no uh, uncertainty, that there were two explosions, two bombs. This was, uh, a gentleman was one of those people. He was a, uh, uh, 
lobbyist uh, in, in uh, the government in Oklahoma City, apparently. And he, ex he described clearly that he was in a bus, and uh, there was a, this huge bomb that lifted the bus up. A few seconds later, there was another explosion that just about knocked the bomb over. And many people said essentially the same thing. Not only that, there were seismographs, okay? They recorded like earthquakes, two seismic events, no question about it. This is uh, an actual seismograph. This guy, Charles Mankin, uh, a geologist, says, it's, it is definitely a second explosive event. His colleague or somebody else, Ken Luza, another uh, uh, expert, says, this indicates two detonations occurred in Oklahoma City at the precise time recorded by the seismographs. Now, that really, uh, puts a big hole in the official story, which says that there was this one truck bomb. Now, what does an anvil truck bomb do to a building? <clears throat> we actually found out what, the, uh, what would happen in, in that scenario. At, at the University of Oklahoma, uh, excuse me, University of Wisconsin in 1970, these guys, these crazies, uh, bombed this building uh, a Ford van filled with anvil, very similar to the truck bomb at um, Oklahoma City. Pieces of the bomb were found on top of an eight-story building three blocks away, and 26 nearby buildings were also damaged in addition to Sterling Hall. So it was a big bomb. Did it destroy Sterling Hall? That's the building in the old days, and probably a photograph from the 60s. And the bombing occurred uh, toward the end of that of the building in this photograph. Um, there it is before the bombing. There it is after the bombing. Okay. Um, there was no uh, severe damage to the structure, the, the, the supports, the columns of the building. As a matter of fact, as you can see, there are columns right there standing you know, nice and undamaged. So just uh, blew away the facade of the first floor and windows on the top. It did not destroy the building. Nothing like the Oklahoma City bomb. And here, uh, in this caption, it says, uh, there, there were broken windows, minor fire damage, and no significant structural damage at all. That's what an anvil bomb does. <clears throat> and in uh, Saudi Arabia, the Kobar Towers bombing against the military station there. This was a, a huge bomb, bigger than any anvil bomb. It was a professional military explo uh, uh, explosive device, probably C4. <laughs> and it only tore the facade, the front uh, walls of the you know, apartment complex. Okay. Those indentations there, that was just, that was uh, from the original structure as you can see here. Only the front wall was destroyed, not the supporting columns. That's a, a close-up view. Uh, so here's this crater in front of the building. Okay, Look at the size of that crater. Again, this was a, a huge bomb. And where's the crater in front of the Murrah building that you would expect from a bomb that would do the damage that was done to the Murrah building? Where was that crater? There was a crater, but nothing like the Cobar bombing crater. It was hardly visible. Here you kind of see it down there. Okay. General Parton, Vincent Parton, an expert in explosives, investigated you know, what the heck is going on here. There are a lot of questions, you know, uh, because this is an engineering problem. There are, there are engineers who know, and expo explosion uh, munitions experts who know what happens when bombs are used against targets. Okay. And he did a, a, a detailed analysis, and he came to the conclusion that that anvil bomb, if it was an anvil bomb, could not possibly have done that damage. Because a blast, in fact, no truck bomb would have done the damage that was observed on, um, on that day in Oklahoma. Because the pressure, the blast wave, drops off dramatically, exponentially, uh, with distance. So you get just a few feet away, and the bomb is not going to be affected. And these columns were very large and powerful. Okay. So he uh, did a detailed analysis, he studied photographs, and that's the conclusion that he came to. And he especially looked at these columns. 
And that's one of the columns right there. And you can see how big it is from the size of these guys. Okay. Now, it's plausible for people who don't know, if you're not a, a scientist or you know, an engineer, uh, you might think, well, there was a bomb in a blue building, right? No, it does not work that way. We can figure these things out with science. Physicists, engineers know what's going on, just like in 9-11. Okay? That's that column, several columns like that. He saw clear evidence that that was uh, brought down by uh, demolition placed right on or near the column not by a blast wave from 60 feet away or 40 feet away or whatever it was. <clears throat> so, yeah, the, the, these uh, uh, images are not quite in order, and I don't know why, but at least we're getting through it, so it's not a big problem. I'm going to have to figure this out when I get home. Anyway, uh, so General Parton says, I know of no way possible to reproduce the observed building damage through simply a truck bomb effort. It is impossible that the destruction to the building could have resulted from the alleged bomb alone. First, blast through air is a very inefficient energy coupling mechanism against heavily reinforced concrete beams and columns. Second, the blast damage uh, potential falls off exponentially with distance. The blast pressure from the truck bomb would have been a factor of 10 below the yield strength of concrete, which is 3,500 pounds. By contrast, heavily reinforced concrete structures can be destroyed effectively through detonation of explosives in contact with the reinforced concrete beams and columns. Indeed, a careful examination of photographs reveals a failure mode produced by demolition charges and not by a blast from the truck bomb. And other experts concur, saying no truck bomb of ANFO out in the open is going to cause the kind of damage we had in Oklahoma City. Another person, PhD in physical chemistry. General Parton's assessment is absolutely correct. I don't care if they pulled up a semi-trailer truck with 20 tons of ammonia nitrate, ammonia nitrate, it wouldn't do the damage we saw in Oklahoma City. Now, this is a tell, another telltale sign that something is amiss. You see how deeply the, the bomb penetrated, or rather the damage was in here, okay, by that uh, supposed uh, bla truck blast. And there are windows. That back wall is intact, and there are windows in that back wall. I remember that photograph from the beginning. Any um, bomb powerful enough to demolish huge columns in front of that building would have, without question, blasted the back of the wall, because the wall is much, much less uh, uh, strong than those columns, and certainly the windows. Another test was done by the government, by the way, um, of what would happen. Uh, um, don't ask me you know, what exactly they were trying to prove because they actually disproved their own official story. So they, uh, at uh, this Air Force base, they uh, set up this uh, test of this building. They made up, they, they constructed a building that they were going to blow up. Um, not uh, like a miniature version of the rural building, but smaller in size, much less strong, much smaller columns, not reinforced to the degree that the Murrow building was reinforced, and no, no, no uh, ceiling, uh, no roof. So, and then they made a bomb of the same size as it allegedly occurred, uh, was used in Oklahoma City, and they put it right in front of this building, and what would you expect, seeing the damage at, uh, to the Murrow building? You'd expect this thing to be blown to smithereens, right? No. Not quite. It was, in fact, not blown down at all. Not even the front. You, you had the walls blasted in, but the columns are sitting there nice and pretty. It didn't even destroy this smaller, weaker building. The same exact ample bomb that was supposed to have been used at, in Oklahoma City. Okay. So uh, now the author of, of uh, an analysis of the results from that government study says, it is impossible to describe the damage that occurred on April 19, 1995 to a single truck bomb containing 4,800 pounds of anvil. The damage to the federal, lower federal building is consistent with damage resulting from mechanically coupled devices placed locally within the structure. As can be seen from the tests conducted at Evelyn Air Force Base under known conditions, reducing damage to reinforced concrete structures is difficult. And General Parton, the guy we saw earlier, he's a munitions expert in the Army and Military whatever. Uh, he knows that you have to hit targets. That's why in the military, you have to hit large, you know, strong structures to, to destroy them. You can't just uh, set up a bomb blast 
20, 40, 50 feet away. That doesn't work. That's the laws of physics. The procedures used to cause the damage to the building are therefore very large and complex than simply parking a truck and leaving. This is a nuclear physicist, all right? You know how they say it doesn't take rocket science? Well, this is like a rocket scientist. Yeah, he, he knows what he's talking about. I believe that the demolitions charges in the building that were placed inside at certain key concrete columns did the primary damage to the moral federal building. It, it would have been absolutely impossible and against the laws of nature for a truck full of fertilizer and oil, no matter how much was used, to bring the building down. <clears throat> So that's the physical aspects of this impossible if, uh, alleged event that uh, Timothy McVeigh, this crazy right-wing guy, destroyed the Monroe Federal Building and killed all those people. It was actually a demolition job. Now for the uh, elements of conspiracy, literally conspiracy. Okay. About five more minutes or, or less. we got to get some time for questions. Okay. Uh, there were ATF uh, uh, agents stationed in the building. They had an office there, but they weren't there that day. Why? They were told not to come to work. All right, they got. Um, but they were there on the scene. They were in the area, and they were right there on the scene, uh, Johnny on the spot, right after the bombing. How do you, how do you like that? And their children, of course, were in the daycare center here. Um, then this, this one uh, agent, ATF agent, claims that he was in an elevator, um, and that he had the elevator experience a free fall, and uh, he escaped the elevator um, and went and saved more people. That was a fabrication, because there was an elevator mechanic on his way, independently of the, of the bombing, uh, with a team, okay, to uh, uh, check out the elevators, and he found that there was, the elevator came with one cut, there was no free fall, and the uh, elevator that this guy was talking about was actually jammed in and closed. There was nobody in the elevator, nobody could have gotten out of the elevator. So there goes a lie, a clear cut lie. This um, officer, he knew that uh, it was a fraud, this whole thing was a fraud. So he collected evidence and was on his way to deposit the evidence in a storage facility. He was murdered. But they claimed that it was a suicide, even though it was impossible because he was shot on the top of the head and he was found half a mile away from his car with his wrist slit and all that kind of thing. Similar to uh, the many people that were killed after witnessing the John F. Kennedy assassination. This uh, congressman, one of the, or rather um, legislator, one of the few good ones, uh, invest, uh, set up a, a citizen's committee that was investigating, huh. or wanted to investigate the uh, uh, Oklahoma City bombing. And he was, the group was stymied at every turn. And the legislature refused to investigate. And that was hit, led by the governor, Frank Keating, who was a Bush, a Bush, uh, you know, uh, one of the insiders in the Bush uh, circle. So then they set up, they got ready to demolish the building, and General Barton said, no, we don't demolish the building. He formally requested the authority not to rush the demolition because examination of the building remains would have immediately revealed the cause of the destruction. And yet, they went ahead and destroyed the evidence, just exactly like a Sandy Hook. Just like in 9-11 uh, with the World Trade Center Towers, over and over again, we see this pattern. Now, what was the purpose? Anti-terrorism -terror legislation was immediately uh, pushed through, uh, demolishing the Fourth Amendment, <coughs> and uh, I'll read the bottom board there. Um, the timing on the bombing is all too convenient for those who would like to further consolidate government, police, and intelligence agency control over the American people. Now, the Oklahoma City bombing <coughs> appears to have been a right stag like attack whose purpose was to provide a justification for further consolidating the least state in America. And some of you may know that the Reichstag fire in Germany in 1930 something was uh, perpetrated by the um, Nazi regime, Hitler and his crew. They destroyed their own uh, uh, legislature uh, building, like our capital building, to further their. Uh, dictatorship. And of course, our nice Democrat, Democratic governor, uh, excuse me, President Bill Clinton signed the legislation because they're all in on the game. Democrat, Republican, doesn't make one big of difference. So I'm going to skip 9-11. Um, I had a lot of uh, stuff to say about 9-11, but I'm certainly not going to get to it. I'll try to get to the conclusion here. <clears throat> 
Bear with me. This will take just a few seconds. I had a really uh, a whole lot of good stuff on my love. I've talked about my love a whole lot anyway. So. Okay, let's. Um, oh, hold on, hold on, please. Just, let, me give you, let me just take a few, a uh, couple minutes to get to the conclusion. I'll rush through it. Okay. Okay, so what is happening in this country? Double click on it again. I don't, um... It'll take a second to open. There we go. Just let it... Just, yeah. Just, just, yeah. Yeah. just take a second. Sorry about that. Okay. This is a, a painting. I don't even know the... Hmm? It's by Gustave Doré. Oh, you know this one? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, I, I know the artist. I know his style. Great. I mean, I don't know him personally. Okay. Who is okay. That? Anyway, Who is uh, that? it's it now. What this uh, is is it's called the uh, Devil's Balalaika, and the Balalaika is the guitar-like thing that he's playing. This is a legend in Russia. I think right. it was Russia. Right. That um, the devil is playing. Uh, is having the people dance to his tune in a grave, in a, in a, yeah, cemetery. And when he stops playing, they turn to stone. Okay. We are being played. The American people are being played. Okay, they have been for uh, several decades now. Um, it, has anybody seen the movie They Live? Okay. This guy, he, he has to put on these special, uh, sun, he uh, finds these right, special sunglasses you. and he um, <laughs> starts to see what's really going on in the world. He, he sees the messages uh, uh, planted by these aliens who have taken over the world. Uh -huh. Okay. And so he gets to a point where he sees a man but now he has the sunglasses on. He sees this person that we think is a man there on the right. It's actually an alien. Uh, it's, it's a kind of campy, funky uh, movie. It's not a great movie, but it has a great message. Okay. And so without the glasses, he looks like an ordinary guy. Okay. But the reality is that he's a freaking alien. These uh, leaders of ours, quote unquote, look perfectly normal, right? They are. And, and, and the people behind them, like these Rockefellers, okay? They are pretty much demons. Not physical, <coughs> literal demons, but I'm not kidding you. They are spiritual demons, demons in effect. Who, they are, they might them? as well be actual devils, all okay? For, for, the, for the things they do. And now, uh, please. Now, what, what makes it, what allows them to be, uh, uh, to be in power is our constitution, okay? It's a, it's a big setup. Uh, uh, it's not working, it's not going to work, because what we have is not a democracy at all, it's an oligarchy. It looks nice, but it's actually quite a monster. It just doesn't have the, the, the physical form of a monster. It's a, it's a, but it's not a physical, as I said, it's not a, a flesh and blood monster, it's like a maze. It's like a mechanism, it's a machine, it's a system, and we're supposed to get in there and, and try to play, our, play the game. But we can't play the game, because it's, a freaking, it's like a freaking maze. It's designed for us to get lost in there. Voting, protesting, running around, okay, with our heads cut off. We are not getting anywhere. We're not winning this game. We're not going to win this game. Going back to the dragon imagery, we're being constantly attacked by this monster of ours, which is ultimately the United States government, and we know what we have to do with dragons. Every one of us. Thank you. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. All right. Now you got nine. All right. All right. Now it's time for the question and answer session. Okay, Yolanda, go ahead. Okay, very quick. So, <clears throat> what put to your head to to talk about this is hoax about Sandy Hook School and how did you? I mean, where, how did? Oh, by the way, Tim, Tim, one second. One second. I don't. Could I don't want to. I don't want to uh, keep that on for just a second. There, that's my website. I'd like people to notice that. Uh, you can go to raftd.org. That's a new website of mine. 
um, and, and uh, it has my overall program. And as a matter of fact, it, it would answer Ilana's question right that she's asking me right now. But I'm sorry, I interrupted you. So uh, what made me, what made me uh, get into this? Yeah, take a while to go back on. So, so, it's all right, so what, what, what put to your head to, to thought about Henry Hook School like it's hoax, like it's not true? Oh, I just, that's what this whole program was about. Um, there's, there's a ton of evidence. Okay, scientists go by evidence. Okay, uh, honest investigators go by the evidence. The official story, okay, uh, in, in these, inc these kinds of incidents is a crock. It's just utter lies, utter uh, nonsense, utter deception. It doesn't make any sense anyway. So when you find that, when you see that, okay, I don't have any ulterior motive. I want to know the truth. I'm essentially looking for the truth, like many of these quote-unquote truthers, all right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and so we have to expose these hoaxes, because they're obvious hoaxes. Okay, uh, if I want to ask a follow-up question to mm -hmm. what Ilana just asked you. Um, what, what do you think about, Ted, what do you think about the um, gun laws? I mean, how do you feel about, how would you feel about, for example, uh, a federal ban on, on, on AR-15 rifles? Uh, being, sold to, being sold to private to private citizens. Okay, an AR-15 rifle, and actually I described this in, in the section that I skipped on 9-11, is, is essentially uh, a 223 caliber uh, rifle, or 5.56 millimeter yeah. rifle. Mm -hmm. It's so it's, a, it's, it's, pretty much a, it's a semi-automatic. Yeah, semi-automatic. It, uh, it's, it's used <laughs> right. by the army. Yeah, the, the, the AR-15 is, but essentially, I'm answering your question. Uh, the AR and AR-15 is essentially a, a rifle of a certain kind. Yeah. Um, but now, I, I, how would you feel about, yeah. how would you feel about an uh, a, a, I'm, I'm, I'm going to answer your question. Okay. Sure. Uh, I am not particularly opposed to people having uh, rifles in their homes to, prevent, to mm -hmm. protect their homes. My uh, problem is with handguns because 90. 5% or actually not quite that much, but the vast majority of handguns, especially on the street, are, excuse me, uh, murders and, and shootings are by these lunatics running around with handguns in the public, not protecting them, themselves or their homes, carrying on an aggressive, uh, uh, you know, uh, attack on members of the public. So I have a huge, I have, do have a problem with handguns, but my personal views or anybody's personal views on handguns or assault rifles or anything is not really, uh, it's not really critical here. It's not really the point of this business that the government is carrying on. They don't care about people being killed with handguns. They murder people left and right, like 3,000 people on 9-11 and many, and, and many others. Um, they, kill, they kill millions, literally millions, of, of human beings. Okay? Iraqis are human beings, last time I checked. Vietnamese were human beings. They kill, slaughter millions of people. They don't give a damn about anybody's life. So they have an ulterior, they, you know, they do have an ulterior motive in this uh, quote-unquote gun control thing. They are concerned about our safety. All right, but would you, would you support, would you support uh, restrictions, um, whether by the state, or, wait, wait, would you support restrictions on ownership of guns? How would, how would you feel about it? Do you think that's a I, good idea? I think that restricting or actually banning handguns would probably be a good idea. I don't uh, okay. particularly favor banning rifles for home defense. Um, but my bigger problem is with this government at all having control over those things. I would, what I would really favor is us Americans deciding those questions. All right. All right. Um, all right. Who, uh, sir? Did you have a question? Yeah. When uh, when Trevor got Trevor Martin got shot a couple of years ago, the Trey Black Martin. Caucus came out and said any black and white uh, shooting in the future, we're going to protest. No matter. We're going to protest, and that's what the what the Black Lives Matter is doing right now. Anything that happens, they protest, even though they know that a lot of these cases are not legitimate. What was, sir? Did you have a question? Uh, the question is: uh, Is that what you're talking about? These uh, phony uh, 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 about Black Lives Matter is taking up these phony cases, like they did in was it uh, Washington D.C. or? They, they, so some of them, the McDonald case, well, right. that was right. That, that, that was, but but uh, these other cases, it's it's okay. a fraud. Sir, sir, if you want to, if you want to give a speech, talk, no, I'm not, talk I'm about. No, I'm not giving a speech. I'm asking you, okay. is that what you're talking about right. about the, the government or George Soros is backing these people? Uh, that's kind of a different subject. Uh, I, uh, uh, well, you, you this, don't want to talk about the black, huh? huh? You don't want to talk about the white conspiracy, huh? 
Uh, sir, 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 wait, what, what, ridiculous nonsense what, what, with, a, with what, an answer. What, what, did, what does this have to do with black and white? Uh, what I w was trying to say is that, that uh, those particular incidents of individuals killing other individuals, whether police, black people, white people, green people, okay, uh, that's kind of a different subject. We're talking about, what I was talking about and what I'm most concerned about is the government carrying on false flag uh, incidents, uh, uh, attacks, as well as hoaxes. And that's what I was describing today. It, it, so the government, your government, my government, these people in power, uh, who are doing the bidding of other, even more powerful people, are slaughtering Americans. That's what I'm concerned about. I am not concerned about, I mean, I am, but in, in this context, I'm not uh, talking about uh, police killing uh, anybody, black, white, green, or blue. All right. Uh, wait, wait, sir. Okay, wait, Jonathan has a question. Go ahead, Jonathan. All right. All right. Uh, it was my understanding when I read the sheet that we were talking about fear through public policy to get the public to agree to things that they never otherwise would have agreed to. So I think it's in very poor taste that anyone here uh, tries to demonize a race or a culture or a religion okay, while a, they're asking their question. Right, yeah, wait, uh, My question is this. There are things we can't confirm and there are things that we can. There are things that are true. There are things that are false. I think the most important thing is to focus on is what there, policy wait, is, is there a question in any of this? Can I ask him and not you? <laughs> okay, well, you're asking both of us, so go no, ahead. I'm not. What was the question? Just, okay, what's your question? My question is, is it not the policy that you're focusing on this more than the actual <laughs> events? Because people's emotions are so wrapped up in these events, that we can't get to the policy that is the fear mongering and yeah. generating yeah. profit as a result yeah. of those events. Those events are highly emotionally charged and you get people then use their racism to bring into the dialogue and it turns into a freak show instead of a dialogue that this nation needs to have. Right, I am concerned uh, more about uh, the policies, but if you mean in, in, uh, policies by the government, not necessarily you know, pieces of legislation, okay. as much as the, the, the uh, programs of our rulers, who want to control us. That's the overall uh, issue that I'm uh, concerned about and, and what I've been investigating. All right. Um, all right, does anybody else have a question who has not already asked a question? Yes, Charlie. Yeah, Ted, there are shootings. There's been a shooting, I think, every nine days, 300 or something like that, the last time I looked at the figures. There's shootings all over the United States. Um, they call them mass shootings, three, five, depending on the criteria you're using. Uh, why do you think they need to fabricate or orchestrate one? You're using this? You're telling me there are you shootings oh, all the time. Yes. Yeah. Where yeah. A, a young person takes a gun, brings it to school, and shoots it up. So I don't see the purpose of fabricating it. Okay, well, there are... When there's so many... Right, well, did you... Did you did were, all you... The, were all the others fabricated? No. There are people right now, right, probably at this, in this very, well, if not this minute, this very hour, shooting, you know, one or two people here in Chicago somewhere. Well, they have five or more. They've kept records of right. shooting. Uh, what I showed you, I showed you a list, right? The, the, the numbers are relatively small. The, the big numbers, the uh, out, you know, outrageous numbers, uh, uh, those are all, pretty much all, uh, as far as I can tell, all um, fabrications. Uh, you know, the 20, 30, 40 people There's killed. 300 of them? There, there are not, no, there are a number of them, and they're the ones that are played up by the media. They're the ones that are, are, are given all the attention. Because the media, uh, the, the corporate media, are part of this cabal, okay? They are playing the game along with uh, well, our other masters. Wouldn't a, wouldn't a shooting at five or Listen, Charlie. Not every, not every, not every, not every shooting, not every shooting of a handful of people is going to get attention because, like I said, our, our rulers, our masters, don't care about individuals shooting each other as such. They care about control, and they can do that by uh, uh, performing these hoaxes that get all, get all this attention on this huge problem of, of you know AR-15s, people going to school, slaughtering people by the dozens. They call it a mass shooting. 
depending on how you want to do it. Usually five or more. Right, but what I'm, saying, what, I'm saying, what I'm saying, what I'm saying, to answer your question, the, 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 the big, it's only the big shoes that, that are um, being used by the government for manipulation. It's only the, the you know, huge numbers, like Pulse. The Orlando shooting is even more obvious of a fraud than, uh, than, than uh, Sandy Hook. And all, anybody here can Google, uh, first of all, Sandy Hook hoax, and also Orlando shooting hoax, and you'll get plenty of information. All right, all right. All right. Let's, let's, um, now, Tim had his hand up before, so Tim has a question. Go ahead, Tim. I still can't quite believe what you're talking about. I, I find your, your stuff fantastic and preposterous at the same time because I looked at the 9-11 stuff. I've seen some of these documentaries and even even with your 9-11 stuff, what you've obviously all forgotten is the smelting of okay. aluminum. This is a, is this but a anyway, question? I don't understand how you know you can look, I can look at the same set of facts, conclude much differently and, and you could do the same thing. I mean my question is, why, I, I know you have a passion for this stuff, I know you believe this stuff you're believing, frankly, I have a big problem well, like a, believing. Can I ask a question, Tim? Why do you believe what you believe? Why do you believe what you believe? Because I think it's factual. And I don't? I think it's, no, I'm not saying you don't, but I, I, I just have a lot of trouble with the dichotomy. Can you explain? I mean, uh, or just tell us why you believe what you believe, in a short synopsis. Okay, um, I'm essentially a, a, a scientist. Uh, I started in engineering when I was in school. Okay. I, I'm an amateur astronomer. I built my own fantastic telescope. Okay. telescope. You no know, need for false modesty here, because it's quite special, and you can find a book on this right. uh, that I published. It's called 3,000 Deep Sky Objects. I, um, in anything that I do, I'm concerned with the truth, okay? okay? And as a sci scientist, are interested in discovering the truth. Uh, when the uh, Catholic Church uh, was telling everybody that the uh, sun revolves around the earth, Galileo said, no, no, I have evidence to show that that's not the case, here's the evidence. The Catholic Church says, no, uh, we're the boss, uh, you know, we're the master here, and we say, this is the way it is, your evidence be damned. Okay. Uh, our government is in that analogous position of the Catholic Church in the 1400s. Okay. We are in a deep sleep, Tim, okay, uh, where our government is playing this diabolical game of screwing us over, killing, not only, it's bad enough, they're killing third world people left and right, and we act, we Americans act like that. That's perfectly hunky dory. Okay. Uh, they're killing Americans as well. And, and the evidence, as I said, is massive, overwhelming, bountiful, and cannot be ignored by anybody with a scientific mind. All right. Uh, Andy had a question. Go ahead, Andy. Well, an observation really quick, and then my well, question. For I think I speak for everybody when I say what you're telling us would indicate if, if what you're saying is true, some of our politicians have been lying to us. <laughs> <laughs> I think you say that jokingly. Yeah. No, that would never happen. What? <laughs> never. Uh, and, uh, my question is, um, did, you, uh, did your research show any correlation between when these, um, like, like Sandy or Oklahoma City, it's a coincidence that they want to pass some kind of legislation that Congress might not go for unless they were motivated by some kind of tragedy, right? Yeah, that, well, that's, that's a oh, major motive sure. in everything they, they do. I mean, not, take 9-11, okay? Um, they laid out the plan, the entire plan, in black and white. Okay. Um, the uh, Project for the New American Century. Yes. Um, I forget the title. Project for the New American Century. Yeah. I've read yeah. the documents. I, I, talked, yeah, I, I talked about that in a presentation earlier, but please okay. go ahead. So, so they, they literally they spelled it out. We have to have a new Pearl Harbor. We have to have this huge attack like Pearl Harbor so that we can carry on this imperialist, uh, neo-imperialist program of ours and pretty much take over the world, which they're in the process of doing. So yeah, uh, these things are done for a reason. 
I mean, they're, they're elaborate, huge plots, um, and nobody does nobody uh, does those kinds of things. Plans them, carries them out, uh, spends billions, if not trillions, of dollars uh, without a purpose. Uh, okay, uh, Heather, did you have a question? Yeah. yeah Go actually, ahead. Coincidentally, you talking about Sandy Hook. I don't know. I got on this kick this week, and I've been watching all these news clips and everything about the Sandy Hook, so I thought it was odd that you brought that up. And what they did mention was that they were, the governor of that town was rallying for gun control, like around that time. And they said, how could they declare 26 people dead when in that, in the state of Connecticut or whatever it was, only a doctor could declare somebody dead, and they didn't even let anybody in there. Mm -hmm. Right, you're right. That, that is totally uh, uh, abnormal to say the least. That's, that's what you find with these in, these events. Things are in the twilight zone because you are in the twilight zone. Nothing makes sense. People don't act normally. People don't uh, uh, operate uh, official like like normal uh, officials do. Um, nothing makes sense. That that doesn't make any sense. You can't have a mass casualty incident. Uh, where people are supposed to be dead, and like you said, uh, there's no uh, professional medical personnel to say that these people are dead. There was no proof of no. evacuation. Right. It does, no, anything. right, it doesn't make sense because it was a hoax. It did not happen as, as, it, was said, as, as it was said that it happened. All right, um, all right, Victor, did you have a question? Yes. Two or three questions. Don't interrupt me you now. Uh, listen, the first thing is, um, yeah, I saw that picture of. Uh, Obama crying. I, I cannot believe that he will react to it and shed crocodile tears. Is it right? What? Oh, shed, cro shed crocodile tears? Yeah, croc tears. Right. Is it possible that he was part of it? Or pa he was actually reacting emotionally? No, he's the, he's the president of the United States. Yeah. He's, he's been president for many years. He knows what's going on. You, 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 and he's a smart guy, unlike maybe some other presidents who yeah, weren't right. necessarily that, that, that bright. He, no, his, it's his attorney general. They went down to uh, Newtown and conferred with the governor and whoever, okay? They're all, they're all in on the plot, except that Obama is a much better actor than those idiots that they hired. But he has no acting experience. <laughs> he's a, he, has, he has ability. <laughs> all right, now we have a... Uh, listen, uh, the second part is, and this is a little bit... On the same subject, terrorism, but outside the U.S. In Mexico, <coughs> we egged on the government to take on the mob, the organized crime, and they are bleeding to death there. Do we hear anything about it in here happening something similar? Because we are part of the war on drugs. Uh -huh. So what's, what's the question? So what is, what do you think is the arrangement here between the organized crime and the government? I don't, I'm not sure about it right now. I know that in, my, what, what I do know is that in, in the Kennedy years, um, the, the mob were, were, was real big and they were used by higher powers. There's a higher power than the mob in this country. Okay, and they were used, the mob was used, uh, the mafia was used to uh, implicate themselves and, and other low lives in the in the Kennedy assassination, when it actually was planned by perfectly respectable uh, villains, uh, you know, high high up in, in the society and the power. Yeah, but it seems like you, what's happening today is something new. The arrangement is new. You don't hear all the news that you used to hear about it. Uh, and secondly, we are actually sending rifles and weapons to Mexico for them to get killed. Well, okay, I don't know, I, I'm sorry, I don't know much about Mexico, and I don't know much about uh, the Mafia. All right, now, um, Robert had his hand up. Go ahead. Do you have a question, Robert? Yes, you marshaled some evidence, showed us some pictures, quoted some things. It's difficult from your presentation to determine what your context is, and I'm curious what sources you used, and uh. did you go beyond what's available on the internet? Well, I read uh, Fetcher's book, and uh, for, uh, for that part, that section, 
uh, on, on Sandy Hook. Thank you, Kevin. And I also read Thank a couple so books uh, by um, Great. Thank you. Um, investigators of, of um, the Oklahoma City Bombing. And on I, and on, on, on other topics, I uh, relied mostly on books. Uh, for instance, um, I did a, a couple presentations on one on John F. Kennedy, uh, the assassination, and one on Robert Kennedy, the assassination. And for those, I literally read, you know, uh, overall like uh, dozens of books, if not, I think probably a dozen. Have you done any direct investigation beyond doing book reports? No, no, I'm not. I'm not a direct investigator. I, I, I take. Uh, there are a lot of honest investigators. Ordinary people, the vast majority of ordinary people who want to be informed, do not have time to do what these diligent investigators do. Okay, uh, they're like professional investigators. Uh, they uh, write reports. Uh, they publish them in book form on the internet or whatever. They, they uh, use videos. We, as intelligent people, uh, if we're concerned about the subject, interested in the subject, we look up that information. We read it in books. Uh, we uh, look it up on the internet. Okay, which is a great source, by the way. Uh, people say, well, there's all kinds of junk on the internet. Yeah, there's a lot of junk and there's a lot of good stuff. So we have to evaluate and make judgments about uh, the reports that we read. And then uh, we can make, uh, I think, a, a reason, uh, form a reasoned opinion about those events, those, these phenomena, and, and, and gain true knowledge, good knowledge. All right. Um, now, does anybody else have a question who has not already asked a question? What will you look for this? this in the, what will you look for? If I want to... Uh, wait, uh, uh, yeah, material, go, wait look you're out of order. Uh, order. You're out of order. Okay. All right. Now, uh, now, all right, Jim, do you have a question? No, I, I, I just want to be out of order. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's go to a panel, Don. All right. All right. Let's, let's have, a, have a round of applause for our speaker, yeah. Ted. No, we don't have time. Okay, okay, then we'll move into the rebuttals. Okay, listen, could, could you remove this thing from the... From the just just pull it up and uh, put it on its table. Yeah. Okay, you want me to grab... Here, I'll put it right on the chair there, Ted. Yeah. We're all set. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Let's now, see Ted one more time. All right. Yay, thank you. All right, now, how many people want to give a rebuttal speech? Everybody that wants to give a rebuttal speech, raise your hand. Okay. One, two... Three, four, and uh, five, and uh, and and then we got to stop the clock at eight forty. How much time is it per person, Tim? Uh, four minutes. Let's try about four minutes. Four minutes. Okay. okay. And let me get the projector back on so we can time a little better. Six times four, twenty. Okay. Okay, okay. that should do it. Okay. Uh, okay. Who who go? Okay. Are you you first, Jonathan? Okay. Go ahead. Let's thank our speaker. Yay. In 2008, uh, when asked by a journalist on a prime, primary, primetime debate, uh, who would Martin Luther King Jr. vote for in 2008, uh, then candidate Barack Obama answered he wouldn't vote for any of us. So it's with that answer that I give my rebuttal for four minutes on probably one of the most emotionally charged topics of our time. Uh, in James Carroll's book, uh, House of War, he writes, the National Mall was never more itself than on August 28, 1963 when Martin Luther King Jr. before hundreds of thousands of people articulated a world-changing dream of another world. It's not only a dream of racial harmony, but a vision of a changed relationship to the use of violence. Again and again he said, we must rise to the majestic heights of meeting physical force with soul force. We have to meet physical force with soul force. Every time you see an event, whether you can confirm it is true, or you cannot confirm it, and it is false until you know more information. Every time you see something on the news or the internet where you're not sure and there is doubt, and that's a very American core part of who we are as a people, doubt. Don't surrender doubt when politicians say, this policy is going to go forward whether you like it or not. No, it is not. We the people will decide, right. and until then, we will be doubtful. When they tell us, well, something terrible just happened, you immediately have to just watch us pass this into law without any debate, without any discussion. Now, that's Iraq War right there. So I want to talk about Iraq War. Uh, 
when a gigantic wealth redistribution occurs in any time in history, funneling trillions of dollars from working classes up to the 1%, and these warped, twisted people almost completely dominate public policy on Earth, saying more, 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 more. It's for a very clear reason. Okay, they see the planet as a giant monopoly board. Uh, it's resources to profit off of, to wage slave we the people, to, you know, make some rich overseer richer until we're exhausted our whole lives, some oligarch to reach the status of God, some extinctionist to reach the status of super God. And it's almost completely dominant public policy. There's no doubt that they're an endgame strategy, and if you need more proof, then just go to the media of places like Iceland and Sweden and Norway and Finland and Denmark, where there is a civil society that is based on peace and soul force. We have to mobilize. We have to organize. We have to peacefully and democratically participate and voice our dissent and cooperate and show up. That's what they bank on, that you stay at home and watch Fox News. That's what they bank on, so that you watch the breads and circuses and don't peacefully and democratically join arms. I got, I got a half a minute. And say what our values are. Okay? We have strength in numbers when we show up. The abolitionist movement showed that. The suffragist movement showed that. The civil rights movement showed that. And all we're saying is, is that we start to need to show up. This is a quote by George Orwell to end. I know I have only five seconds. Circus dogs jump when the trainer cracks his whip, but the really well-trained dog is the one that turns the somersault when there is no whip. We're not circuit dogs, we're we the people, and it's time for a peaceful, democratic system change in the United States of America. Yeah. Kind of system change. Frankly, if you want a real conspiracy theory, I'll give you one. Oh, oh. oh here we go. <laughs> and that was the firing of a gentleman by the name of John Galt. Not John Galt. He was a director of the Oak Ridge Laboratories. You know, he was the designer of a nuclear reactor that could change the world. The molten salt nuclear reactor. They did it. He was one of the first ones to talk about global warming. His name is Alvin Weinberg. One of the first ones to talk about the dangers of our present day nuclear power structure. One of the first guys to, for 25 years, research this stuff. And he was let go in 1973 by a congressman by the name of Chet Holyfield because he didn't go with the nuclear program. The thing is, we have lost benefits of this technology due to his firing. We have, he became a has-been or nothing until the rediscovery of these documents around 2005, 2006. Frankly, if you want to talk about a governmental conspiracy, there's one with some meat on it. Thank you. Okay, who wants to be the next victim? All right, come on, we got an open mic. We got an open mic, get up there. Andy, if you're going to go, he's a skeptic. All right, all right. This guy's a skeptic. Skeptical about what? Yeah, Okay, I'll comment on the speech I actually heard rather than give my own. I appreciate your, your preparation and your willingness to get up and, and throw your ideas out in front of people. Uh, synthesizing ideas in a search for the truth, I think, is a very laudable goal. I'm less convinced that the internet as a whole is a very useful tool for that because I think that separating the signal from the noise is very, very difficult. So what you showed us in your presentation today 
focused on the inconsistencies in two events that were given to us as, I wouldn't say a, a package deal, because the stories, as they unfolded in the aftermath of the incidents, did evolve. But they did coalesce into what I would call an accepted narrative. The same way as with 9-11, the same way as with the, the build-up to the Iraq War. And at least with the Iraq War, we know that the accepted narrative has been invalidated. That's the one conspiracy theory that I think almost everybody can latch on to and say, yes, I believe that we were led astray, there were no mass weapons of mass destruction, and so we were uh, provoked into wars that we did not need to fight. That one I think we can all agree on. On many of these others that are being bandied about in the infosphere, in the public mind, I'm less inclined to form an opinion only because I don't think the truth can be known. Even when the evidence is inconclusive, and it's difficult to draw a clear conclusion about who did what in order to achieve what objective. I personally feel as though I, I can't form a strong opinion. I don't have enough information. I'm not a, an investigator out there in the field. And so relying on even expert resources and physical evidence that demonstrates the falsity of the accepted narrative does not rise to the, the level of, of grand conspiracy. I'm, I'm not sure I'm willing to make that leap yet. The thing that I really wanted to hear, which you did not focus on, because you were so focused on the inconsistencies with the physical evidence of the two events you, you prepared, and I think you had more to prepare or, or to present, on 9-11, which has been gone over again and again and again, it would fall out of scope for us here, um, is more about the, the motivation, the, the quote, the title of your speech, terrorism, 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 be afraid. If there's a PSYOPs operation being conducted by our government, by our betters, to control the narrative, to control the information, to withhold information, or to produce information that is disingenuous or, or to get us to relinquish civil rights, to get us to buy into consumerism, to get us to support foreign wars, to uh, adopt the jingoistic support of the U.S. military no matter what they do, what heinous crimes they commit, including uh, torture, which has been shown to us pretty clearly. That was what was missing from your speech, and that's really what I wanted to hear about, not the inconsistencies in the, in the dominant narratives. Do I believe that there is a conspiracy out there to control the narrative? Absolutely. It happens everywhere, all the time. Everyone does it. That's politics. That's uh, campaigning. That's the presentation of the news. And we're all subject to it, and I appreciate the the recommendation by one of the other commenters that we do withhold our consent and that we do retain our skepticism and evaluate the information with the best available uh, evidence and intuition we have. Thank you. Okay. We have an open mic. We got to get the, our next person to speak, okay. please. Hello. All right, Charlie. Hello. Uh, let's thank our speaker for a very. Let's thank our speaker. That's a lot of work putting these things together. We appreciate it. You know. Uh, I hope to see you next week, also, you guys. And you can take on Lee, and so he doesn't like twist our minds. You know. But anyhow, I'll be very quick, and we have. Looking at two events, um, the shooting at an elementary school had been very much involved in the coalition against gun violence and a member of Brady Group and all the other ones. And I'm even a member of the Illinois Moms Taking Action. Um, 
their shooting incidents is, I don't even remember the figures, uh, taking place all over the United States with five or more victims. Uh, to say that the government needed another incidence to advance the issue is, is totally unnecessary. Uh, there's were more than enough. I didn't post them. I don't post them to the gun crowd because it, I'd be doing it all the time. <coughs> I don't forward emails about shooting incidences, uh, mainly because they're kind of like dark information. But they were when you're involved in the in the movement. These are coming all the time, and I'd be sending out nothing but. So why there would be a necessity for creating an incident that didn't exist? Now the other thing about that, and I caught a little bit on there. Are you wearing a U.S. Army hat? You, Victor. Uh, Charlie, yeah. What Charlie, the hell is that? Attacks. Yeah. <laughs> but anyhow, it said in there someplace that the people requested privacy, I think. And the people who operate the media and the medium and the government and so forth are honoring their requests. Whatever that may be, uh, I can, I can, you don't question things like that. If they make this request, there's, there's nothing served by, there, there's no privacy, violation of privacy of the loss of a child, there's nothing to be achieved by sustaining freedom of information or something like that. That's out of basic respect for one another. Now the other thing is the Oklahoma City, in which I have some direct immediate knowledge. Um, I represent the employees of the Public Building Service of the United States, and that's one of the buildings that the employees were operating. Matter of fact, one of the employees employed at that building was later on assigned to my own department. Um, the explosion did in fact take place. Um, there's evidence outside of damage to the surrounding area, which the thing doesn't cover. It was a significant explosion. The only thing is, again, the, the only outcome of this was that the government pursued militia groups um, subsequent to this. I remember there was some concern in the Midwest because a, a large number of these were in, in fact in the state of Indiana, a significantly high number of them. Now if you're, your basic thing is the government of the United States blew up one of its own federal buildings in order to secure justification to pursue strange militia groups. They don't really need to blow up buildings to pursue militia groups. Um, but that's what I mean. I, 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 I don't understand this. Now the one last thing I'm going to add is government agencies are not in dire to think the government will lie to you and you're all applauding. The government doesn't have uh, media people. Once in a while you may find a media representative. I assure you on this, there's, there's, there's a spokesperson for an agency is not too common. And they're certainly not in the business of fabricating incidents. They don't, they don't even good at responding to media than they are. Um, they're not in the media business. I don't know why that is, but to say that they've gone, here's what I mean, they don't even have basic things that most corporations have when you contact them for media information and things like that, contact information. They don't have that. There are information officers like that that corporations have. Now you're saying, not only do I feel there's a deficiency here, and now your premise is, is that they've gone the other extreme in which they're producing information. No, they're not advertisers. That's not what the government does. That's not their function. And I think you, now show me where 
there have been personnel assigned to produce incidences or information. Okay. A media event is what you're talking about. Okay, okay. okay Charlie. We got plenty of time, yeah. Don. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. What about that guy? I didn't see him. He's got a U.S. Army at us. He's an Army recruiter. Yeah. You fell. Yeah. What are you, Army? Join the Army? Andy, if you need to go a little longer, we can, we can, uh, we, we start, but I mean, if you, if you go, or it's, well, 30 seconds, it shouldn't be long. Okay. Um, I'd like to thank our speaker for a really thought-provoking presentation, and, um, once again, um, by the questions that were fielded from the audience, uh, Ted has uh, brilliantly illuminated the problem that we have in American society today that you have, even in a group like this, you have people that are very well educated on certain subjects, but just mind-bogglingly, stupefyingly ignorant on other things. Yeah. And you can switch total. And, and not, er not everybody is ignorant on the same thing. Some people are very knowledgeable on one thing. On the other side of the room, somebody will say, well, that's insane. I can't believe that. That can't be true. There's a, a famous uh, scene in the early MASH where um, Colonel Blake is talking to the general at headquarters, and the general is saying, uh, Henry, I, I'm, I'm finding some things, uh, you know, Ms. Major Houlihan sent in some reports, and some of this stuff is really, really hard to believe. And the gen Henry says on the phone, he says, well, then don't believe it, General. Click. He hangs up the phone. Just close your, if you, you don't want to face the reality of the facts, just close your mind and hang up. And that's what people do. That's why I prepared this, uh, it's not fully finished yet, um, if you don't have time to read 50 peer-reviewed books and thousands of reports, uh, a couple hundred hours of videos documented by people that are risking their lives and careers, elders of society to, that have produced a, a body of data, like the body of data on, that exists between the uh, debate between flat versus round earth issue. The database on the round earth side is pretty big now. People came along behind Galileo and said, hey, he was right. And so Sheila Samples from the Army wrote in about 2005, she was writing about 9-11, and she said, you know, when you get down to it, uh, a thing can't ever be anything but what it is. The truth is the truth. Sooner or later, it'll come out and it will, it'll be self-evident. Three basic facts about 9-11 are driving the whole terrorist, 9-11 is the issue that's driving the conversion of America into a police state with militarized police, SWAT teams all over the country, uh, police giving the idea that they can just gun, you know, get the civilization, get the people used to being gunned down without provocation in various places. Uh, other countries, you know, this kind of policing is totally unacceptable. But I'll just write this, excite these for into the record. These three facts, the basic facts, are non-political. They're non-debatable. It doesn't matter what political bent you have. These are documented reality that are so well documented by peer-reviewed sources, hundreds of them, that you could present these to a, a jury of seventh graders and they can understand it. Um, you would be laughed out of a court made up of seventh grade science students if you try to disprove any of these three basic facts after you look at the evidence. The media told us, Charlie says the media uh, in the army or you know, the government doesn't have media people. Well, the government worked hand in glove with the media to tell us that the tr uh, terrorists attacked our twin towers. Our twin towers were attacked. They, they said two buildings were destroyed, not seven. All seven were leveled that day, basically. Also, they said they, they, they filmed it. The Twin Towers are collapsing. People were screaming and yelling, look at that building collapse. Look at that. That's all we heard, buildings collapsing. Those buildings weren't collapsing. They were being blown to dust, converted to dust, dustified in the air. Each Twin Tower rolled over Manhattan as a cloud of dust. 
sideways in the wind. There was no collapsing going on at Twin Towers. The layers of explosives started from the top down, and that's what it made look like. It was a gravity collapse. It takes 20, 30, 50 times more explosive evidence to pulverize and dustify a building than it does to just bring it down in a normal demolition. The third thing, the towers, along with the other five buildings, nothing was really damaged by office fires or jet fuel. Plane crashes had nothing to do. The plane crash events, whatever they were, whether fabricated or not, had nothing to do with the events known as 9-11 or the damage in New York. 9-11 was orchestrated by our government, not our total government, but traitors within the government that were in key positions and also the key positions of the billionaire owners of the media. And many, if you, if you log on to a lot of different, I'll have some internet websites, some good ones, a list next week. Many people around the world, all over the world and other countries, people uh, working for a cleaner environment and a, and a better world are saying 9-11 is the key event that's driving world destruction. We have to puncture that myth and get public back to normal. Okay? Thank you. All right. All right. All right. All right. What time is it there on that? It's uh, 20, 8.33 p.m., 20.33 hours. Okay, how much, uh, okay, is there anybody else who wishes to give a rebuttal, give a rebuttal speech? No? Okay. Give yours and then we'll let Ted go. All right. Um, all right, well, first of all, I, uh, let's thank our, our speaker, Ted Aranda, for coming here and giving a presentation. Okay. And uh, now, Charlie has already um, refuted uh, Ted's presentation, and, and um, I'm not going to go and repeat the same arguments that Charlie made. I, but except to say that I agree with what Charlie said about it. All right. Um, I now I, I would just like to also up. add. I would just like to also add that those of you who believe that there were no victims, um, should that there were no that there were no real victims at Sandy Hook, you should go talk to the parents of the murdered children, who at this moment at this time are suing uh, the Remington uh, for, um, over the uh, massacre, the, the gun manufacturer. Um, by the way, this, the school was closed in 2012 following, and, uh, following the massacre and it was demolished. Now, a lot of these theories, a lot of these theories come from a woman named Orly Tates, who is known as the birther queen because, because um, she, uh, Orly Tates, who is herself an immigrant from, uh, from I believe, from Moldova, uh, she is, um, she uh, claims that Barack Obama was born in Kenya, and that the whole notion that he was actually born in Hawaii is a complete lie. So, so this is not the, so, um, just to give you some idea what, you know, what, what the source is for a lot of this. By the way, these kinds of, you know, a lot of people who distrust the government are tempted to believe these kinds of conspiracy theories. These theories, you know, I mean, we have this thing called freedom of speech here in the United States and here in the College of Complexes, but these theories are not really harmless. Because, because of this stuff being put out on the internet, the, the families and survivors of Sandy Hook have been threatened because they're thought to be part of some evil government conspiracy to take away guns from all the gun nuts. And uh, there's, for example, um, there was a man named Greg Rosen who sheltered the Sandy Hook students and, uh, during, and the bus driver during the shooting in his home. And he's been subject to online harassment. There have been other people who've been threatened uh, who are in, who they, whose only crime was that that their child was murdered at Sandy Hook, and now the conspiracy theorists um, are 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 taking the law into their own hands and threatening these alleged conspirators. Now, now on this, you know, uh, Ted brought up the the subject of the Reichstag fire. Um, there are a lot of people who think the Nazis set that fire in 1933, burned, burned their own Reichstag building. And it's possible. It's never actually been proven. Uh, but so what? It doesn't make any difference as, as far as whether the Nazis started World War II and committed the Holocaust. Now, um, 
Now, on the subject of that, if it was proven that the Nazis didn't actually do it, would that mean the Nazis are okay and everything else they did after that was okay? No. And by the same token, by the same token, I happen to oppose government infringements on civil liberties, but I'm still in contact with reality. I don't believe in insane, unproven, and, and by the way, unprovable conspiracy theories. So, um, why do people believe this stuff? I'll tell you why. People who are beaten down, who know the government's not on their side, mm -hmm. and, and, and who know the government serves the rich and powerful instead of themselves, right. and people who know that the media doesn't get the facts right, people who know that, that if, in spite of what Charlie said, the government does feed lies to the media. They've been doing it. They've been doing it since since World War II. Right. People who know this are less inclined to believe the official story, whether it comes from the government or from the mainstream media, and they're more inclined to believe these conspiracy theories that they read on the internet, no matter how far-fetched or implausible they may be, because they come from an unofficial source. They consider it more plausible than what they hear from the government. And, and, and so, and the internet has facilitated this because the internet enables everybody to become a publisher. In the old days, you didn't get this stuff because people got their information from Walter Cronkite or from the New York Times. Now, people go on the internet and they get their information from World Not Daily <laughs> or, or from, or, or from, uh, you know, or, or from you know, or from new you know Newsmax or one of these, oh, those or or they get their information from or they get their information from Alex Jones, right. <laughs> you know, they can get their information from anybody now, and so, and so this, so it allows everybody to become a publisher, the democratization of info. Yeah. But the result, since these people don't have editors, the result is that the the internet is just flooded with crap. That's um, but I think it's also possible, uh, it's also possible to be too gullible and to trust the government too much. And the interesting thing, and, I, and, and while I respect Charlie and Tim, our cameraman, and, and the interesting thing is that Tim generally identifies as, as, as Tim is usually thought of as a man of the right. He, he calls himself a Republican. Charlie is considered a man of the left. He calls himself a socialist. But one thing they share and I guess I'm venturing in, uh, and I don't mean this to be a personal attack, but they both, they, they both expressed it. The thing, you're already six minutes and 24 seconds. Oh, okay. Well, we got time. time. We got time. No, we're not. Oh, oh. Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. What I wanted to, all right. What, what they both share is, is, a, is a mistrust, thank you, is a trust of the government. Oh. Thank you, Don. That's a fault. Yes, because it can lead you to believe oh, yeah. things that aren't true. Trust the uh, all right, thank you very much. Thank you, Don. Yeah. Trust the internet. Yes, it is. Don't trust the government. Don't trust the government. You want to say something? I want to ask you something. That's the only straight news you get here. Okay, for those who are left. To hear my <coughs> final thoughts, um, <coughs> there was a couple of answers. <coughs> there, there were a couple of mentions of um, conspiracy theories. A conspiracy is a plot. Um, usually, we talk about plots that are carried out. <coughs> To do, so, do something illegal by uh, more than two or more people, and conspiracies happen all the time. Uh, everything is technically a conspiracy, so there are a lot of conspiracy theories. Some are legitimate, some are not. How do you test these "quote unquote" conspiracy theories? In other words, <clears throat> ideas about what happened or what didn't happen in any in given incident. You have to ultimately rely on physical as well as forensic science. Many of these things are crimes, right? So that's what forensics is about. <clears throat> so you have to look at the evidence, and you have to decide on the evidence in a scientific manner. And that's what the best 
uh, investigators, quote unquote, conspiracy theorists do. So there are things going on in this country, in this world, that are, seem fantastic, like that the government would do X, Y, or Z. Okay, now, those people who castigate conspiracy theorists, quote unquote, say to themselves, well, the government couldn't have done that, therefore it's a conspiracy theory. They actually ignore the evidence uh, in many of these cases, like the cases that I investigate, which clearly point toward uh, these people, wherever they might be, by the way, I, I'm not saying they're you know, individual A, B, and C, but wherever they are, did, uh, for instance, destroy the World Trade Center towers and the other buildings, and uh, through demolition. It wasn't uh, planes or anything of the sort. So you have to uh, ultimately get to the science uh, of the matter. And that's one of the reasons that I spent so much time on 9-11. I even did this for this one, even though I didn't get, I didn't have time in this presentation. So let's look at 9-11 for just a second. How much time do I have? Like uh, less than a minute. Okay. Couple. Uh, the oh. essence of 9-11 is, is a plane. So. I don't want to take a minute. To attend. He can, don't worry about he can, it. He's got more time. He's got about a minute left. Okay, don't no, worry. Not guys, true. guys, guys, don't worry, don't worry about it. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Okay, the essence of 9 11 okay, is a huge steel tower. Guys, 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 guys don't, don't worry about time. I'm almost done. It's a huge steel tower, steel and concrete tower, massive, dense, strong, being struck by a projectile, a target being struck by a projectile. This is um, terminal ballistics, so it's a field of science. Okay? And in order for that to happen, a projectile to penetrate a target, it has to be quite strong, very strong, generally speaking, stronger than the target. Those planes were hollow aluminum tubes. It is no exaggeration to say that they were essentially flying aluminum beer cans. And I had a whole lot of evidence that I didn't get to, of course, because I had limited time. This is ex essentially what happened what on 9-11. There we go. This is essentially what happened on 9-11. On here's the plane, here's the steel tower. There was no, there's no damage to this steel plate. Three inches. Yeah, but this is the, 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 the steel, uh, uh, aluminum beer can that represents the plane. That, when you look into it, and uh, uh, the physics of it, the science of it, there is no way, period, when you look at, this, at the science, that that plane could have gone into that, uh, into that building the way the videos show, which is without any damage, without any breaking up, without slowing down, without deviating from its path. That is a physical impossibility, the rock bottom science, and anybody who doesn't know that and doesn't understand it and doesn't accept it is ignorant of the science and you should learn your friggin' science. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Oh, Tim. Oh, Tim. I will pass the point. Oh, okay. Whatever. 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 Oh, okay. Whatever.